Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I really apologize for the delay and for changing the time. Uh, I had no choice but to change the time almost twice, actually. And uh, the reason I have uh, too many uh, people around, and uh, uh, I did not want to disturb people around me, so I had no choice uh, but to uh, reschedule. Uh, however, this is not really important. The important that we are going to be able to make it, and we are going to explain some issues uh, Muslims and non-Muslims are confused about. You know, we know that many people, they say words and they throw their words in the air. Sometimes those words are stupid and they are meaningless. And sometimes, uh, even Christians, they say things they should not say. Or let us say they say it in a way is not explained or is not uh, uh, well uh, framed. You know, when I speak to a Muslim, and I say to him that Jesus saved you by his blood. And this is what this, this, the, the thing Christians always they say, you know, like anyone they see in their way, they, Jesus saved you by his blood. How? I mean, even that sentence is not, you know, is not really the right way to, to present Jesus to them. What the blood? And, you know, explain to him first. This is a person who did not know what you are talking about. And most likely he will not like it. And suddenly you mention blood and someone saving you. And this is goes for all religions. People, they present, you know, they speak without being wise and they don't notice what they are saying. If I want to make uh, my child, if I have one, believe in Jesus. Okay, he's a child. And then I will say to him, Jesus saved you by his blood. Okay, how? what does that mean? I mean, this is a child and you are talking about the blood. And then Jesus saved you by the blood. How the child would understand that? And many people who they are not into the faith already, they are the same as a child. So in order to speak to them about something, you have to make a presentation. And this is what we are going to do today. We are going to make a presentation of how to present presentation. In order to do that, I'm going to choose a topic. And today we choose a topic about how Allah he tempt. You see, the word temptation, anyone can use it, even it exists in the Bible. And uh, many Christians, they say, God, he tempt us. The fact this is not really true. They, they say that God, he allowed the, the spirit uh, to tempt Jesus. But this is God allowing the spirit to present. That's all. It's not God who is tempting you. God tempt no one. Uh, but as again, Christians, they say things without understanding what they are saying. The same as Muhammad, who say things he do not understand how stupid what he is saying the difference between a christian he say things with good heart and muhammad that muhammad he knew his line and he's fabricating stories and those stories expose itself and a christian who say things without being careful he is just being a good person with good heart but choosing the wrong words so today we are going to go and speak about temptation you know God, if we go to the uh, uh, to James uh, one thirteen, let me try to make the text bigger, so you guys can see it better. Give me a second, please. Okay. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. So, you know, I, I can write now, give an excuse, says, okay, God tempt me. Uh, God, he, uh, you know, I, I blame it on God. You see, always a human being, when something good happened to him, he blame it on himself. Like they say, I mean, I'm the good man. I am the lucky. Like when we, if you won the lotto, you say, I'm a lucky. But if you are sick, you blame God for your sickness. Uh, uh, you know, and this is exactly what the Muslims do. The Muslims, you know, we, we remember when the brother... Uh, 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 one of our brothers, he passed away uh, because of cancer. The Muslims, they made the big scandals about it and they said, God punish him. And how? By cancer. I mean, Muslims, they are the most people who come to Europe and USA to recover from cancer because simply they don't have the technology. And obviously the Middle East is polluted and their countries are really screwed up. And as an example, the average of ages in the Middle East is very low because death is very high. 
you will see someone in Europe who live in the age of 60 he's still young compared to someone in Middle East because most of them they die very early and their their Prophet Muhammad himself he died at a very early age uh, compare compare to what we see today in Europe however always they blame someone for something happened to them but is the Muslims right for blaming Allah for bad things happen to them or they are exaggerating me as a Christian I have no right to blame God for what happened I have no right to say that God okay he is uh, I want to blame him for what happened to I am poor because God he wanted me to be poor that's not really true the one who is rich and the one who is poor is not because God made them poor or neither made them rich people have skills and they've been in your skills and how wanted your skills you make money as an example if you are an, a, a doctor who do surgeries uh, one hour of your work is equal to one month of a poor a person who work in McDonald so one hour of this guy work is equal to a month if I am working in McDonald so it's not really God make him rich somebody is born of a rich family is that God who made him rich no you know this person who is born of a rich family as me it's normal to happen you are born of a poor family so what you expect it's not God God have nothing to do with it you are hungry you have no food is that God making you hungry that's not true now can God make nations suffer yes can God punish suffer nations he can can God God can this is why we call him Almighty but don't involve God in everything happening in your life and say I want to blame him for what happened the Muslims they have different kind of religion and their idea is different and their belief is different you see you use the word God the Muslims use the word God but their God have nothing to do with our God you use the word gospel the Muslims in their Quran it's written there the gospel but their gospel have nothing to do with your gospel the Muslim they speak against adultery but you do not know what adultery is about for Islam in Islam adultery is not really what you think in the Bible adultery is totally different a Muslim still he can do adultery as long as he do it according to Islam he is fine so actually Islam is a religion uh, uh, legalized adultery even prostitution even there's the verse in the Quran says that if your girls which mean the slave girls they wish not to do adultery force them not but if you force them Allah all merciful there's no verse not even a single one in the Quran against that which mean adultery of prostitution is allowed Muhammad himself he allowed Muslims to do muta which is nothing but adultery so what we do according to Islam we promote adultery we practice adultery and we say we are against adultery by giving adultery a name of marriage or a name of something else a Muslim these days if you have my book sex and Allah you will see there's many types of marriage in Islam but the fact all of them they are nothing but adultery temporary marriage travel marriage student marriage etc all of those they give them title of marriage but the fact the real reason for them is nothing but sex I am going to different country to study in Los Angeles so what I will do now I am a good Muslim I don't want to do adultery what I will do I will hire a girl I will tell her I'm going to marry you for I'm going to stay in LA for three months I will marry you for three months and I will pay you ten thousand dollars supposedly this is marriage in Islam imagine this is nothing but adultery it's a fornication under title so they say we are against theft Muslims they say we are against theft but the Quran says you can kill them you can steal their money and you can take it and there's no problem with that because Allah he gave you that money so they legalize theft and they give it an honorable name what about killing the Muslim they say the Quran says if you kill one innocent person as if you killed all mankind but they will not tell you that innocent person in Islam is a Muslim if you are not a Muslim you can be killed you can be protected under the title of Ahl Zumma which means you have to pay them money in order to save yourself from their hand so imagine what kind of gang we are talking about it's a mafia you don't want to die we can protect you pay us you are protected that is exactly Islam so they say to you we are against crimes but the fact they are the one who do the crimes they say to you are against killing but the fact they are the one forcing you to pay them in order not to be killed they say to you we are people who support justice but what kind of justice you force me to pay you so I will live especially 
I'm talking about you took my land, you took my home, you took my country, and now I have to pay you to live in my country. But yet they speak too much of justice. So we need to put in our mind that Muslims, when they speak about certain words, they don't mean the same things those words mean to you. When a Muslim speak about genie, a Christian, he speak about demon, but genie and demon are not the same. But many Christians, they keep thinking, they're saying the same. When we speak about Isa, if you read the Quran, you will notice that Isa cannot be Jesus. Isa of the Quran, he have an uncle, his name is Aaron, and he have an uncle, his name is Musa. But all of us, we knew that even Mary, when the Muslim, they say, the Quran says that Mary is the sister of Aaron, you know, and they say to us, oh, the, you know, like you, they call you by the old generation. But, but Mary have nothing to do with Musa. She is not even from the same tribe. So how you came to this... Uh, 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 a stupid statement and we, later we find that Musa have a father his name is Amran and Mary she have a father her name is Amran and both of them they are located in the Quran this is why they are both sisters so we have some names are the same but they are not the same people because simply Jesus of the Bible does not match in any way in any mean with Isa in the Quran the funny that Muhammad he claimed that he is a person who came with knowledge but yet he could not even find us the words of the gospel so he used the he used the greek word which is injil but yet the muslims they claim that isa was a prophet sent only to the jews so he was sent to the jews but his book is in greek language does it make sense the only makes sense the only thing makes sense that his apostle he wrote his book in a greek language as a message to the greek people that makes sense but to say that Jesus book his name is Injil and Allah himself he named it Injil that is very silly and very stupid for a very simple reason Muhammad himself do not know even what the word Injil mean the same as the word Jibreel the same as the word Israel the same as the word uh, Abraham the same as the word Isa even Isa you ask the Muslim what Isa mean what Al Masih mean they don't know one of the funny definition for the name of a Messiah which is the Masih in Arabic they say to you oh, he have a flat feet and this is the most funny stupid statement ever I, I, I heard that the messiah was called by that name because he have a flat feet so let us make it clear we maybe share some words because language we are sharing languages you see arabic is my language so i can say to you most of the words in the quran are part of my language which means i use them in my daily base if i'm speaking arabic but yet the words mean to me something else from what it's mean to a Muslim. And I hope what I'm, you know, with this presentation, we made it clear. Now we go to the Quran and try to find out what is the temptation of Islam. You see, I did search in Google and I found here, like I, I searched how Allah tempt us. How Allah tempt us. I found the Muslim have articles why Allah tests us with hardship. Uh, why we are tested uh, beating temptation all right beating temptation okay well, let's see what is that you see when you when you see a Muslim speaking about uh, what they call ethic you might believe that they have they have really they have have a high standard of ethic beating temptation part one you know Ahmed right he has a brew always routing around, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's go to see something, you know, solid to stand with. How do I stop? Okay, check your heart. Wait, 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 this has nothing to do with my topic, so let us get up. I'm trying to figure out what the Muslim will say to us if we ask them to show you, not to show myself. Already I know all the answers Muslims they will give to me. Why Allah test us? Hardship. With hardship. Okay, why Allah test us with hardship? Uh, when we focus in hardship and the tribulation, one should be joins. Okay, okay, let us see. Let me make it bigger a little bit so you guys maybe can read with me. Maybe here we have something interesting. All right. And we will surely test you. We will what? We will surely test you. Who is talking supposedly? Allah. Allah saying he will surely test you. Okay, why Allah saying he will surely test you? And how he will test you? And does it really say what it says? 
Quran 62 verse number 2 Quran 62 verse 67 sorry verse number 2 uh, if we go in the Quran and we try to find what the Muslims talking about let us say uh, Quran 2 67 Oh, sorry, this is not uh, the, uh, hold on. Uh, it is uh, 60, 60 second two, sorry, 60 second two. Okay, let us go there. 67, it's the opposite. All right. I know the verse here says something different. But see, the translation is totally different from here to there. It is he who created death and life to test you as to which, which of you has uh, best indeed. Okay. So Allah, he created death and he created life. I, I mean, this is very silly to say created death because death cannot be created. It's the same when Muhammad, he says, Allah created the day and the night. I mean, the night is not created. The night is the, uh, just the absence of the day. Uh, simply, I mean, the light. You know, the Bible says God made light and he called light day. So what do you mean you create a night? You cannot create a night. I can close all the windows in my, in my room, put the blinds, even in the middle of the day, and I have night inside the room. So this is, what is night is something locally where it is, there is no light. However, here it says that Allah, he is the one who tests you. How he tests you? He tests you by creating death and life. And then he will, you know, he will test you with your deeds. But this is totally in contradiction with all, all the what Muhammad, he taught. Because Muhammad, he taught the Muslim to believe in destination. And destination means that your deeds doesn't count. At the end of the day, it's what Allah, he wrote for you. If we go and we go to this... Uh, uh, back to this article. Let us see if the Muslims they come to us with, with better argument. Uh, and we surely would test you with something uh, of you of uh, fear and hunger and lose of wealth and life and fruits and give you blah 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 blah. Okay, and it is here. Okay, so Allah will test you with all those things. But how Allah He tests really people? Is that really the truth? Is that really what the Quran teach? Absolutely false. Do you think that you will enter paradise without such a trial? The same as come to the one past before you? If you think about it, you will say, okay, you know what? Life is full of trials and people, they get tempted by the devil. But what here it's saying that Allah is the one who will tempt you. It's Allah who is going to make you do wrong. And this is supposedly a temptation or a test of God. But that does not make sense still. For Islam does not believe that testing of God is what Christians understood. As an example, I say, I can say that God, he, uh, you know, he is, uh, you know, he tests me just by having me in this earth. I mean, obviously, I'm going to go through a big test. But it's not God who is tempting me, and it's not God who deceiving me, it's not God who is trapping me, no. God created me, and he said to me, go. Live your life in the best way you can. Women are not created for me to be tempted. Women are created for me to be married from. Women, men are not created for him just to be tempted, as much it is about you having a family. So we have a reason for men and women to be exist. We have a reason for money to be exist. Money is not really, uh, 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 the, the, the money is not the evil, even though it is the root of the evil, because people, they worship money and they forget about what is the need of the money. The money is to serve you, not to serve the money. People live for money.
Same they live for sex, some they live for gambling, some they live for drinking, some they live for parties. Some people they can they are addicted to drugs, uh, some people they are addicted to smoking. Some people, everybody is addicted to something, and that is, you know, it's about you how much you want to hurt yourself and what do you want to do in life. People they hurt themselves, it's not God hurting you. Nobody is forcing you to go and gamble, nobody is forcing you to take drugs, nobody, nobody, nobody. Now, what about me getting sick? Is that a, is that a test from God? Well, you know, I can get sick. That because simply the nature of our body, which means the second we are out of heaven, we are out of the protection of God, and earth have germs, viruses, all kinds of diseases, you name it, accidents. So this is not really about God, but yet can God do something to me? Yes, he can. Can God do something to you? Yes, he can. But normally life for everybody is the same. All of us, you can be a very good Christian and you can die by cancer. You can be a very good Muslim, which means you kill, you rape, etc. And still you will die by cancer, which means Allah will not really help you. Muhammad himself, he died by poison. So you being good or bad, look, if you think about it, people who they are bad, they have a better life. And I mean better life in the, in the standard we understand today. Better life is... You have a nice car, you have a big house, you have a nice, uh, you know, you, you have a lot of money. So if this is your standard, they have a lot better life than my life. But depend on your standard. So if you are evil, really you can make a lot more money. From someone who have a good heart. Scammers, hackers, thieves, you name it. So is it God who made a woman hooker? No. Is that a God who made a, a man a child molester? No. Is it God who made me thief? No. Is that God who made me, you made you criminal? No. Is that God who made uh, Muhammad all the crimes together? No. God did not do that. It's people who choose to be following the devil. But in Islam, the story is different. In Islam, it is Allah who did all those things. If you remember, actually, we mentioned it many times in the last two days. Looked like I, I remember it. I can't forget about it. If we go here in Ibn Kathir, where, where if you remember, uh, uh, Adam, the sin of Adam from the beginning of, ma of, of, of mankind, according to Muslims, the sin of Adam, the evil he did, it was a decision of Allah. Here, Adam, he speak to Allah. He says to him, after Adam, he sneezed, Allah, he said to him, May Allah grant you his mercy, which is very stupid, because if you are Allah, how you say, may Allah grant you his mercy. Doesn't your mercy, and then Adam, he said to him, doesn't your mercy grant, uh, uh, precede your anger? He said, yes. Adam said, and you just denied me to commit this evil act? Allah, he said, yes. And this is the point I'm trying to explain to you. Muslims have different understanding of evil. Muslims believe that evil happened because this is the destiny of Allah, which is the God. We don't believe in such a garbage. God did not destiny for me evil. Otherwise, that would make him an evil God. By reading this, just a few, those few words here, Islam is already gone islam is a history islam is a stupid islam cannot be valid religion because what the point of kicking adam from heaven if adam commit no sin except it is allah sin it's allah evil and as you see in this conversation allah he agreed that he is the one who this denied the destiny of adam to do evil so adam he cannot do different act if god he made a destiny for me to do something who am i and how can i get away from it so based on this story, Adam is a victim of Allah and the evil is the evil of Allah and Adam was a good person. But if God decides for you to be evil, then how you can escape? So this is the idea of temptation in Islam. This is not really a temptation, it is a destiny. It's a destiny written for everyone. If we go in the hadith, just to make, you, to make it more clear for you. If we go in the hadith, <clears throat> We will find the hadith says the following.
Read with me carefully, please. The Prophet said, at every womb, Allah appoint an angel who says, O oh Lord, a drop of semen. O oh Lord, a clot. Because uh, Muslims believe that we are, in the beginning, we are semen of women and men mixed together, chapter 86, verse number 6 and 7. And then we transfer, transform into a clot. And you can find that in chapter 24. So we are became a congealed dead blood, and then so it's a stages. The first stage, semen of women and men. We know that women have no semen, and then the semen of the women came in from the ribs of the women, and semen of the man came in from the backbone. And we know this is very stupid to say. And then we became a congealed dead blood, and then from that we became a little lump of flesh. Then Allah, He will make His wish to be complete. What is that wish? He wrote, he will, he will give the destiny for the angel to write it for you when you are in the womb of your mother. So read with me carefully. Then if Allah wishes to complete its creation, the angel asks, Oh Lord, it will be male or female. So even decision of male or female, it's not, it's not a decision of nature. It is decision of Allah. Then is it going to be rich or blessed? Are you going to be happy or miserable? It's decision of Allah. You know, that's it. It's already be, you are not even created yet. You are in the process, and then Allah is deciding if you are going to be miserable in life or you will be happy in life. Then He continue, and how much provision He will be, you know, how much He will live, how much money He will make, and what His age. Look at this. So all of this is not is not is not you know. Uh, it's it's already already pre made and pre decided. So if I'm going to be a criminal based on this, Allah decide for me when I am in the womb of my mother before I'm created in the process. He decide that okay, Christian prince, you will be a criminal. If you are a thief, Allah decide for you to be a thief. This is what the, this is what Muhammad is saying. It's in the front of your eyes. So all is written while the child is, is still in the mother womb. I mean, how clear we can make it more than this. So the word temptation, it's not what people think. The word temptation in Islam is nothing but a destiny. However, there is different kind of temptation Islam believe in, which is, can we found in the story, as an example, Harut and Marut. If we go to Harut and Marut story, <clears throat> It says, وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينَ وَعَلَى مَلِكُ سُلَيْمَانِ etc. blah 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 وَلَكَنَ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرِ وَمَا أُنِزِلَ مِنَ الْمَلَكَيْنِ عَلَى الْمَلَكَيْنِ بِبَابِلْ هَارُوتَ وَمَارُوتَ Okay, let us read the translation so Muslims will not say we are making things up. Based on this chapter and this verse, chapter 2 verse 102, it says that Allah has sent two angels to teach black magic. And those two angels, their name is Harut and Marut. And Allah, he sent them down in the Babylon. Okay. Look at this. Allah sent down two angels and their specialty is teaching a black magic. All right. Now, is a black magic something useful or harmful? All of us, we agree that if this is such a thing is, is exist, this is satanic. This is satanic. So obviously it is harmful. So why Allah he sent two angels to teach that? The verse itself explain. Read with me carefully. So Allah he sent two angels teaching men magic and such a thing as came down at Babylon to the angels Harut and Marut but neither of those, which means those angels, taught anyone such a thing, which means the black magic, without saying, okay, so the angels now, before they teach you the black magic, they give a disclaimer. I mean, look how silly this story. We are only a temptation, a trial. Okay, hold on. When the Quran says, Allah, he sent two angels, 
to teach a human being something harmful like black magic and then I am an angel and Allah sent me in a mission to teach you mankind black magic who is the evil one yes do you understand what I'm saying if I am the one who sent an angel let's say I am Allah God forbid <clears throat> and I sent two angels and according to the stories those two angels by the way they are sent by Allah and they are the best of the angels actually uh, uh, the story uh, about those two angels it's very funny and very stupid but maybe another time we can read it all of it so you can see how stupid this crazy religion according to the story here those two angels have sex with women her name is Venus and they gave her the password to go to heaven but Allah when he noticed that Venus is a flying in heaven Allah he cursed her and he made her a star and this is coming from the Greek mythology and Muhammad he took it he put it in the in his religion so now we have two angels sent down to earth to have sex with a woman she is very beautiful she is the most beautiful women in in in, in, the, in, in their time and those are sent for a mission and that mission is not good at all the mission is to teach magic and then they say we are only teaching you for a trial so don't bless them they learned from th from them the means to sow the, uh, a discord between the man and his wife okay look at this they learn from who from the angels okay what they learn from the angels black magic what they will use the black angel what exactly they teach they teach black magic to people so they can cause people to fight with the wife. I mean, how silly, how stupid that is, and what the purpose of this. When here, the Quran making a disclaimer saying, we are only for a trial. I mean, how silly, stupid it is to say such a thing. Well, Shaitan, he can say the same. I am only for a trial. So why you blame Shaitan for evil? Obviously, the source of evil is your God and he is the one who working for it you know a Muslim he says to you okay I can show you a verse did that God he created evil yes God he created evil but he did not create him as evil he created him as an angel for us as a Christians we believe that Satan was or he is a foreign angel so even when God he created the Satan he created him as an angel he did not create him to be Satan In Islam, as you see, those are angels, those are not the devil. Yet their job is to teach people black magic so they can harm each other. And before they teach you, they make a disclaimer, we are only a trial. So what the purpose of this mag? Why God is opening a magic magician school to harm mankind? Why you are increasing evil on earth? Is that going to be for the benefit of mankind by Allah sending two angels? to earth to teach black magic don't we have enough problems don't we have enough pro crimes isn't it enough we have rape we have a criminals we have child molesters we have thieves we have all kind of crimes and now you are going to send us somebody to teach us voodoo that is a stupid so Allah here is not really tempting you Allah here is harming you by evil school. Allah opened a school of evil. He sent two, the best of his angels, to be professors in those schools. And when you join that school, the professor, he make you read a disclaimer. We are here only a trial. So why you are teaching them anyway? Do you want them to do it or you don't want them to do it? If a Muslim, he will say to me, oh, Allah don't want you to do black magic. So why Allah is teaching you the black magic? If you say to me, this is a trial, I will say to you, this is stupid. Because simply, this trial will do nothing. Already, if those people are evil, don't Allah knows that they are evil? 
Isn't your God is almighty God and he knew what they have in their heart? Isn't it enough what the evil they are doing already and now you want to teach them more evil so more people are getting hurt? Just because you like to have a trial? What about I teach you how to uh, 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 to kill somebody and then you say to you, this is a trial. Disclaimer. Hmm? Why you are teaching people, especially here we are talking about magic, which supposedly taking people out of control. It is somebody controlling somebody. And if you remember, Muhammad himself, he was under black magic. So Muhammad was a victim of Harut and Marut. And this is how stupid Islam is. Muslim believe in a black magic. Me, myself, I don't believe in this garbage. Somebody will say to me, or like in the Bible, it says that the stick of Moses, this is how people, they saw it, as it, as it is a magic. So his magic overcome their magic, but the fact it's a miracle of God. Jesus, when he resurrected people from death, he did not do magic. When he made the blind see, he did not do magic. When he healed the leper, when he did all the miracles he did, he did not do magic. This was real. It wasn't fiction and it wasn't a lie. So when a Muslim, he speak about temptation, he is speaking about something totally different. Additional to that, there is a pre, you know, we mentioned already that there is a destiny. And we mentioned now, that there is something Allah he like to increase evil on earth. Allah he used the Muslims and anyone he can to spread hate as an example, and that is another way of tempting mankind to be evil. If we go in the Quran, we will find in chapter 5, verse 14, it says that Allah He will spread hate and enmity between the Christians. Why Allah want to spread hate and enmity between the Christians? I mean, what kind of God he is? This is chapter 5, verse number 14. And this is the translation of Yusuf Ali. From those who call themselves Christians, we did take a covenant, but they forgot a good part of the message that was sent to them. So we string them with enmity and hatred between one to the other. Okay, so now me as a Christian, I hate my brother in Christ. And this is weird, right? Because you cannot be Christian and you hate somebody. How you can hate your brother in Christ? That will be evil. If this has happened,
All right, guys, I really apologize. Uh, for some reason, my computer totally froze. And uh, I don't know really uh, what happened exactly. But it looked like we have... All right, guys, I really apologize. Uh, for some reason, my computer totally froze. It is you with the phone. All right. All right. So I don't know what happened. You know, it totally everything is gone and uh, the screen went black. I had to restart. Uh, I was speaking about chapter 5, verse number 14. And when Allah, he speak that Allah is going to strength us against each other, that is not a temptation of God. That is a temptation of Satan for Allah, and Satan is one. You know, if you ask a Muslim, what is the purpose of this madness? I mean, why Allah want to make me hate my brother in Christ? I mean, what is good? Is going to do to mankind by making Christians hate each other what is the purpose of this wisdom nothing but hate the purpose is very simple it's hate this God is Satan his name is Allah and he hates you to the point he will do as much as he can to divide your Christians so when you see two Christians one he is a protestant and one the other one is a catholic being funny and they are calling each other names they are serving the devil without knowing each one of them he think that he is doing the right thing oh you are not following the truth uh, you are wrong oh you have the pope oh you have etc oh you have etc you are you are if you are a person who speak with someone as a christian with hatred in your heart you are no Christian and you are serving Allah obviously you are ser serving the devil himself I can correct someone he's a Catholic without saying to him you will go to hell because who said he will go to hell simply not necessarily there's many who they call themselves Orthodox Christians Protestant Christians Catholic Christians they will go to hell because Jesus said clearly not everyone says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his well so from all of you, the one who will go to the kingdom of my father is the one who do his will. Not the one who call himself Protestant or Catholic or Orthodox. The division is from the devil. So either you decide to be against the devil, fight division, or you help the devil and be part of his plan by stringing hatred between one to each other. I can correct my brother in Christ by the love of Jesus, not by hatred. You can be a person who is a Christian, you have a wrong understanding of something, but doesn't mean you are a bad person and that will not be a reason for me to hate you because that anyway will make me not a Christian. So we both are losing anyway, if we do that. So here we find that Islam call hatred hatred a plan of God hatred is part of the work of God hatred is not coming from the devil in Islam hatred is coming from Allah you know when somebody says to you all oh, those people they hate the Muslims the Muslim when he say that he's being stupid because as you see hate is coming from Allah hate is specifically to the Christians look here how evil he is the one who export hate and deliver hate to the Christians is Allah and the Bible says clearly that the one who deliver hate to you is the devil so we have totally two different books one making it clear that hatred is coming only from the devil Jesus says, love your enemy, which means if you don't love your enemy, you don't even belong to Jesus. And loving your enemy does not mean you give him a hug or a kiss. That is a kind of a funny behavior, have nothing to do with Christianity. Loving your enemy is by correcting them and rebooking them. Even if it's going to cost you your life. This is what all the apostles of Jesus did. Loving your enemy is not about what some mad 
teachers they keep saying that if you speak against Islam you are not being a loving person as Jesus said this is stupid Jesus he called all those who they are not following the true belief all kind of titles sons of the devil sons of snakes uh, hypocrite like you know if if your father is Abraham you do the act of your father but your father who is the devil this is what this is what the Bible teach in the other day one, uh, one said to me uh, how you say to a Muslim you are like a donkey I mean the Bible says that many men they are like like a beast they are like a beast they live like a beast to eat and have sex and die donkey donkey at least he don't you know uh, he eat the grass to eat he don't eat the grass just to cut the grass and hurt the grass human being he killed but not to eat human being he hurt but just to hurt human being he got jealous but he have no right to be jealous I mean if somebody have a have a beautiful wife and you don't have a beautiful wife you get angry if somebody have a, a, a good house you don't have a good house you are you are going crazy you wish him bad I mean why human being can be very evil but based on Islam all the evil in your heart and all the evil in the world is starting from the time of Adam as we showed you from their books this is the evil of Allah let me read again what Adam said to Allah and then Adam received from his Lord's words Adam said oh Lord did you not create me with your hands he said yes he said Adam and blow life into me he said yes which means Allah he said Adam and Adam is talking and when you sneezed you said may Allah grant you mercy Allah he said yes and then he says doesn't your mercy proceed your anger Allah answer saying yes Adam said and you this denied me to commit the evil act Allah told yes all the evil is a destiny in Islam all the hatred is a destiny it is not really a trial it was not a trial to Adam to commit sin it was a destiny we mentioned a hadith many times before about Adam was debating with Moses and Moses he accused Adam that because of him Allah uh, you know uh, he kicked him out of heaven because of his sin but Adam he answered Moses and he refuted him according to Muhammad which means Adam was the right and Moses was the wrong read with me carefully The one is talking here is Muhammad. He said, Adam and Moses ha held a dispute, a debate. Moses said to Adam, Adam, you are our father. You divert, the, the, deprived us and caused us to come out of paradise. So Moses obviously believed in the original sin, which means Moses, he cannot be a Muslim because original sin is not Islamic according to Muslims as you see original sin it's destiny <laughs> it is destiny so Adam said you are Moses choose Allah choose for you his speech and wrote the Torah for you by his hand the Muslim Abdul they believe that Allah he wrote all the Torahs and give it to, to Moses by tablet imagine how many trucks Moses he needed you know the Muslim don't believe that Allah he gave Moses the Ten Commandment no he gave him all the Torah so imagine how many pages written in rocks so Moses should be busy until now carrying rocks to move them from place to place then he continued and saying to Moses do you blame me for doing a deeds which Allah decreed that I should do 40 years before he created me here the word deeds by the way it's it's the act the evil act which is mentioned here in the hadith so Adam is saying to Moses 
how you play me when this is was a destiny made by Allah for me 40 years before my creation and then you will see that Muhammad he agree with Adam that he is right and Moses he lost the argument as you see here so Adam got the better of Moses in argument so Muhammad he agree with Adam that yes it's not the fault of Adam this is not his sin this is a sin decreed by Allah 40 years before the creation of Adam so Adam did not go through a trial it was not a trial it was not a temptation according to Islam it was a pure destiny Is the idea guys clear to you? I hope I hope what I'm saying is is not uh, troubling you uh, in the way you know I, I you know sometime like I feel the limitation of my English holding me back from you know maybe giving the statement in the right way but I think it's easy to understand by showing all what we showed in the screen there is no trial in Islam. It's not a test. It is a destiny. From the first man, it was a destiny. And here we ask ourselves, what is justice? So Allah kicked Adam from heaven for what reason? Nothing. It was Allah who decided to Adam to commit sin. So why Allah, he punished Adam out of heaven? No reason. It's a stupid argument. It is a stupid mad belief. And it is injustice. I make you do sin and then I punish you for the sin I made you do. In other way, Allah, he forced Adam to do the sin because as you see, it's decreed. It is destiny. That is a stupid. So when the Muslim they speak about trial, obviously Muslims they are confused because I don't blame them. Islam is a confusing religion. This is the religion of confusion. Everything in this cult is a confusion. Everything. From the first page in the Quran to the last page in the Quran, you got nothing but a confusion message. And here is one of them. Now, if Adam, Allah, he made the sin for him 40 years, it's mean. Allah, he made your sin and my sin 40 years before he created us. So why Christian Prince should go to hell? Based on this, I am now, my broadcast happening because Allah, he wrote in his decree that the Christian Prince in the date of etc., in the hour of etc., he will open his chat and he will attack me. It's his decree. So why I will go to hell? Which one is more ugly, the sin of Allah or the sin of a Christian prince? It is Allah's sin. This is not my sin. If me attacking Allah is a destiny, how you can say how you can say it is my sin? How we can say this is the sin of Adam? And this is what here the debate is about. Adam is saying, Well, it's not my sin, you idiot. This is the sin of Allah. Allah, he wrote that for me. Which means we cannot blame Adam. And if we cannot blame Adam for his sin, then we cannot blame you for your sin. And that will destroy the argument of having a savior like Muhammad to save you to go to heaven because it's a destiny anyway. And the Quran have tons of stories like this that it's a destiny and Allah the one who misguide nobody can guide him the one Allah he deceived nobody can guide him and this is why my first book I wrote it's called the deception of Allah because all the story here is about deception Allah he made me believe if I pray to him he will forgive me deception forgive me for what it's not my sin 
You see the madness? Muhammad, he said, in a hadith, if you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you and he will replace you with people, better people who commit sin and ask him for forgiveness. What? Listen carefully. Muhammad said, if you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you and replace you with people who commit sin and ask him for forgiveness. So Allah's destiny is what happening, not your act. Even if you commit no sin, Allah hates you. He will destroy you because he need, he wanted people to commit sin because he enjoy it. He enjoy it. And why? what he enjoy? He enjoy people asking for forgiveness. So based on this hadith and based in this hadith and the other hadith and the other and the other, Allah, he made Adam commit sin. So Adam will ask him, please, Allah, forgive me. What kind of Allah this Allah is? This is not a temptation. This is a destiny. And destiny appear in the Quran all over. If we go in the Quran, we will find the following. أَتُرِيدُونَ أَنْ تَهْدُوا مَنْ أَضَلَّ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ يُضْلِلُ اللَّهُ فَلَنْ تَجِدُ لَهُ سَبِيلًا you know what? I'm going to open different Muslim website. This website have only four translation. There's another website which have all the translation together in one page. Let us see. If we go here in this website, all right. Man yahdi Allah fahuwa al muhtadi. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمْ الْخَاسِرُونَ Whoever Allah guide, He is, you know, the guided one. And whoever Allah deceive is the loser. I mean, He deceive whoever He will. He guide whoever will. And then He call you, you are a loser. Whomever Allah guides is highly guided. Whoever, whoever whomever Allah, He leads astray. It doesn't say lead astray, it says, Yudlil, which means deceive. Go down. Let us see the front translation. All of them says here, send astray, send astray, send astray. But the fact, this is not send astray. The word in Arabic, Yudlil. Look at this guy here. He has cause to go astray. I mean, if you had cause to go, to go astray, isn't it this is deceive? How I go astray? Allah, he caused me. How he caused me? By deceiving me. So who is the one who caused people to go to hell? Is it shaitan? No, it's Allah. You see it in front of your eyes. Which means Allah is shaitan. If you go hear this translator, Muhammad Shakir, he says, and whomsoever he caused to err, these are the losers. Well, he is the one who caused him to be in error. Which is a false translation because in Arabic it says Yudlil, which means deceive. But he whom Allah leaves in error shall surely be lost. Oh, that's it. And not only that, he says in different verse, if we go, let us see a different one. Woman Yudlil Allah, Fala Hadi Yelahu. Chapter 7, verse 186. Let us read the translation. Who is ever Allah allowed to go astray has none to show him the way. <laughs> That's it. And again, this is not so, you know, the word astray is not in the verse. It is deceive. All of them, they are using the word astray. As you see. Here, this guy, he's saying Allah calls to err. Whom Allah leaves in error. Look at this one. This one is even better. He's more honest. 
Whomever God misguides has no guide. Okay, thank you very much. So finally, we get a little bit of honesty in the translation made by Muslim. Whoever Allah misguide, what misguide mean? Deceive. They are trying to be polite, not to use the word deceive. So whoever Allah deceive or misguide, there's no way for him. So who is the one who made me misguided? Allah. It's not the devil. Do you see it? And we can see tons of verses in the Quran like this. It's not like once or twice. It's all over the Quran. Chapter 4, verse 143. It's the same story. Do you see it? The same garbage. Allah is the one who caused you to be misguided. What kind of religion this religion is? So what is the job of the devil exactly based on those verses? If this is what Allah he does, that all those who they are misguided, they are misguided, deceived by Allah. So what the devil do? Allah is the devil. God sent whosoever he will astray and he lead wherever he will to the bath. So all that, but there's two kinds of people. One is misguided and one is guided. However, the one is misguided and misguided by Allah and the one is guided is guided by Allah. Allah leads astray whomever he wishes and whomever he wishes he put in the straight path. That's madness. The same story. It's like they are copy paste from each other. Those who reject our ayat proves evidence verses are deaf and dumb and in darkness Allah send astray whom he wills and guide who he will. I will, I will. Allah causes whosoever he wills to astray, to, to stray in error. What? God leads astray or guide to the right path whomever he wants. Do you see it? Do you see it? What kind of garbage this religion is? This is why we as a Christians, when we have, you know, a Muslim, he might use the same word or temptation. Temptation is a Christianity have different meaning. Trial in Christianity have different meaning. Muslims, they use same words you have in your dictionary, but it does not have the same equal meaning. Obviously, it's too far. And this is all over the Quran. I can keep showing you. Look how many. All those verses saying the same thing. Chapter 39, verse number 36. And the one who Allah deceived, there is no guidance for him. Do you see it? Why Allah sending people astray? Shouldn't Allah's job is to guide us and He love us? No. For He is a hateful God. It's like a lotto. Whatever He wish, if you are lucky, you are from those who Allah, He wish you to be guided. As simple as that. And then look what it says. Who can guide the one whom Allah who Allah has caused to go astray? Do you see how evil it is? Allah is more evil than the devil. That's it. He caused you to go astray and then he will not allow anyone to guide you. Why? Because Allah, he enjoys seeing you in the hellfire. He like it. 
This is his joy. This is what this is the purpose of his existence. In the Bible, it says that if a person is saved, a happiness in the kingdom of God will be. God Himself, He will be happy for a person is saved. In Islam, is the opposite. Allah is saying, "Are you going to guide the one Allah is guide? Are you stupid or what? Are you going to to to, to guide?" The one who Allah himself deceived, the one who Allah deceived, nobody can guide him. And look, I'm reading the Muslim translation. And whomsoever Allah makes her, then there is no guide to him for him. So Allah caused you to be in error, and Allah decides there's no guidance for you. That is not a trial, and that is not a temptation. That is a destiny. And as long as Islam based on destiny, even in sin, then there's no meaning of worshiping this God because at the end of the day, this God, he decides for me what I will do, what I will be before I'm created. As we showed you here, when you are in the womb of your mother, the angel, he will say, Oh Allah, he is happy or sad, O oh Allah, rich or poor, O oh Allah, he is a criminal or bad or good, O oh Allah, he believer or disbeliever. So what the point of punishing me for a sin or for destiny? My sin is not serious, my sin, this is the sin of Allah. As you see, all those are sahih hadith. Uh, look what Muhammad is saying, which is showing again a stupidity of Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, the truthful and the receiver of the truth, informed us. This is the truth, saying the creation of you humans is gathered in the form of semen in the womb of your mother for forty days. I mean, have you ever heard of a lie like this? I am a semen in the mother, my mother womb for forty days. 40 days this is alone is enough to prove that muhammad is a liar and by the way it doesn't say uh, it doesn't say womb here it says in the belly of his mother so i am in the belly of my mother for four for 40 days why my mother she eats semen what kind of religion this religion is and then he continue then it becomes a clinking thing in similar period so it's going to stuck like a clicking thing but, but the fact doesn't say that it says alaqa the translation is false we showed you in the other hadith where it says alaqa alaqa a congealed blood and even the quran says that if we go in the quran we will find the following does it say really that you will be a congealed blood yes it says that here we go alaqa Chapter 22, verse number 5. This is verse, and there is other verse. Then a chapter 23, verse number 14. You are a congealed dead blood in, this, in, the, in the belly of your mother. Read with me. Then we made the sperm into a clot of congealed blood. That stupid statement. Only mad cow will believe in this. You can go right now and check the process of the human you know, creation, the embryo. You will find there is nowhere it says that in any stage that we are a sperm who transform into congealed blood. And what? For 40 days we are inside the belly of our mother. And then we became a lump of a flesh like that. And then Allah, he sent an angel who breathed life into it. And the angel is commanded to record four things. Record what? Four things. It's provision. It is term of life in this world. It's conduct. And whether, whether he will be happy or miserable, what is left? 
What is left? Nothing. Your work is written by Allah. Your provision written by Allah. Your your conduct is written by Allah. You are happy or 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 miserable is written by destiny. That's it. And then Muhammad continues saying, "By the one whom there is no true God, he, this guy is swearing by Allah. This is serious now. One of you would perform the action of the dwellers of Jannah, which means heaven, and that there is only one cubit between him and it, which means the Jannah." When it, when, uh, when what is for or, or denied, you see the destiny. So now you are almost going to go to heaven. Then what Allah wrote for you in your destiny would come to pass, and He would perform the action of hellfire until He entered it. Look at this madness. So now, all your life, you are doing the action of people who will go to heaven until almost you are there. And then what Allah he wrote for you in your destiny will take over. Then you act the act of people of hellfire, and then you go to hellfire. So what's the point of being good or bad or anything? At the end of the day, what Allah he wrote is going to happen. My deed doesn't work. Same, Muhammad, he continue explaining more. And he says, and one of you would perform the action of the hellfire until there's only one cubit between him and hell. Then he would perform the acts of the deliverers of the Jannah until he would enter it. That is the destiny. So what the point of asking for forgiveness, praying, like doing the Hajj, the pagan act of Hajj, what is that for? If I'm going to go to hell, go into hell or heaven anyway. It doesn't matter really what you do. All those hadith is the same. However, just to make it more clear that there is no temptation in Islam. It is all about destiny. There's no trial in Islam. It's all about destiny, which destroy everything about this cult. Here there's a story of a child. This child, he died in the age of infant, little baby. Aisha, she said, and this is a Sahih Hadith, very much Sahih, strong. Aisha, she said, there is happiness for this child. Aisha and Muhammad, to make the story short, they attended a funeral. Chapter, the meaning of every child is born in the state of fitra and the ruling of the dead children, of the disbelievers and of the Muslims. The Muslim, they say, that every child is born as a Muslim. This is what Muhammad, he said. Muhammad, he said, Everyone is born as a Muslim. Okay, let's see the hadith. Every child, no exception. No baby is born, but upon fitra. What fitra is? It is his parents who make him a Jew or a Christian or a, or, a, or, a, or, a, or whatever. What fitra is? Let us see in different translation. It's you will see. It says a Muslim. The Prophet says every child is born with the true faith of Islam. Every child. Okay. So this child is born anyway, regardless if he is born of a Christian family or a Muslim family. He is a Muslim according to Islam. However, the story in the other hadith here is about a, a child who is a child of Muslims anyway. So his parents are Muslims. Aisha, the mother of the believers, reported that a child died, and I say, there is a happiness for this child who is the, a bird from the amongst the birds of paradise. Sparrow, actually, the word in English in Arabic is a sparrow. Thereupon, Allah Messenger said, "Don't you know that Allah created the paradise 
and he created the hellfire and he created the, the dwellers of the paradise and the, the doers of the uh, uh, of the hell uh, you know which means when they are in the in the in their mother womb what are you talking about Aisha, she is thinking a logical thinking that okay he's a child he commit no sin so he will go to heaven muhammad is saying no in different hadith it's make it more clear let's read together this one it says Aisha, the mother of the believer, said, Allah Messenger was called to lead the funeral prayer of a child. Of Al Ansar, Ansar are, they are called the helpers of Muhammad. They converted to Islam. Allah Messenger said, She said to him, Allah Messenger, there is a happiness for this child who is a bird of the birds of paradise, it, for it commit no sin. So it's clear now that this child did, you know, never commit a sin. And Aisha explained more, she said, nor has he reached the age when one commit a sin he's very baby he said muhammad aisha for adventure it may be the otherwise because allah created for paradise the people of paradise and he created to hell the people of hell when they are in the backbone of their fathers as you see so sin is not a reason to go to hell in islam it is destiny Never sin. Adam sin. It was destiny. Your sin, my sin, is destiny. If you are a person who die as a baby, you might go to hell still, for it is destiny. And as you see, Muhammad make it so clear. Aisha assume that this child will go to heaven. Muhammad he said to her, "Don't be stupid. Everyone created to be in somewhere before they are born, regardless of their sin." So it might be the otherwise. It might be he will go to heaven. It might be he will go to hell. So to make it short, if we can, and I apologize, I make my videos long because the topic is complicated and I like to give it enough explanation because many of you may be here first time, but you know, not every one of you is too much familiar with a lot of information. So when we explain something, we better give it the time it deserves and enough information to the point even a person who is just first time ever watching this video, he never heard of Islam before, he would understand. And that is a total contradiction of the Bible teaching. Jesus said, if you don't come the same as those little children, little ones, you will not enter the kingdom of my father. So in Christianity, child age is guaranteed to go to, to heaven in islam there's no guarantee even for children's for everything is based on luck the luck luck simply is destiny if allah wishes you when he created you before he created you to go to hell you are going to hell anyway it doesn't matter So when the Muslims speak about temptation and trial, it's not exist in Islam. This is all is Allah act. Allah is the devil. Allah is the one who made you do evil. It is his plan. And the Quran agree. Actually, if we go here, we mentioned to you where, where uh, uh, Allah in the Quran, he said, that Allah He will spread hate and enmity between the Christians. You remember? Chapter five, verse number fourteen. All right. Chapter five, verse number sixty-four. It's exactly the same. Allah will spread the hatred, but between the Jews. Read carefully. So not only the Christians, Allah, Allah consider everybody. Allah will spread the hatred. Okay. Here he says, uh, amongst them we have placed enmity and hatred till the day of judgment. Allah, he placed his enmity and hatred between them until the judgment day. This is destiny, that's it. A Jew, he cannot get away from it. Can a Jew now, based on this statement, 
be a loving person? No. Can be? Can he be a good person? No. Allah, he put hatred in his heart. The devil, Muhammad, saying to us, I don't want to say Allah because this is all, all is, is the statement of Muhammad, Aka Allah, saying that I am placing enmity and hatred in the heart of the Jews and the day of judgment. The same chapter saying the same about the Christians in chapter 5, verse 14, if you go back, as you see. So we string them with enmity and hatred between one to another into the day of judgment. So based in the same chapter, both Christians and Jews, they will live in hatred because Allah does deny for them to live in hatred. It is Allah, the devil. And the funny about this, <coughs> or what make it more funny, Muhammad, he said that the one who spread hatred between people is the devil. Chapter 5, verse number 91. <laughs> and now I have to say to the Edith Muhammad, how you say to us in chapter uh, 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 514 that the one who spread hatred, the same chapter, you see, we are talking about the same stupid chapter. The same chapter Allah saying he will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians and the Jews enter the day of judgment. It is the same chapter, verse number 90. It says that the shaitan is the one who spread hatred. Have you ever heard of stupid religion like this? Do you see it? Do we have any Muslim have a comment? What a stupid cult. So I say to you, hatred is from the devil in the same time I spread hatred. How stupid that is. And we are not even reading from different chapter, all in the same page. This is a this is a, obviously it's a satanic religion. Believe that hatred is something good. Amongst them, we have placed enmity and hatred till the day of judgment. Look at this madness. My friend, to make it simple and to make it short, Allah is the only deceiver in the cult of Islam. The devil himself is victim of Allah. Even actually according to Muslims. And according to this, the destiny of the devil is to be evil. For Allah, he wrote the destiny of everybody. As long as Allah wrote the destiny of Adam to commit sin, that means Allah, he is the one who wrote the destiny of the devil because the one who tempted Adam in the story of Islam supposedly is the devil and he was one of the genie but the destiny of Adam to commit sin written even before which means all the destiny and whoever connected to Adam's story is part of the destiny plan including the devil so Adam is a victim same as Satan is victim in Islam both are victims to the big Satan which is Allah. So I hope that people, they get a better idea and understanding that when a Muslim speak about trial and temptation, that is not true. Muslims don't believe in such a garbage, even though they can quote for you a verse from the Quran, but Islam believe in one thing, 
that all crimes happen by the plan of Allah all the sin it is the plan of Allah the sin of Adam himself it is Allah crime as we showed you in front of your eyes with the Muslim translation where Adam he said to him and you this tonight me to commit this evil act Allah answer say yes so all of us we are out of heaven based on Islamic the Islamic cult because Allah he is tonight for us to do evil and why Muhammad explained by the hadith saying if you don't commit sin Allah will destroy you and send and replace you with better people who commit sin and ask for forgiveness so all this is drama because we have a sick God his name is Allah according to Islam and he liked to hear people begging him for forgiveness to the point if you don't commit sin Allah will destroy you and replace you with better people who commit sin and they are better than you by what by committing sin and why they are better than you by committing sin because then they will ask for forgiveness so he made Adam commit sin so Adam might beg for forgiveness this is how stupid this cult and this is how sick Allah is he made us do wrong so we ask for forgiveness and if we don't do wrong he will kill us so you have to do wrong you like it you don't otherwise you are destroyed anyway and this is why we all of us should reject such a stupid cult like this I hope you explain the topic very well and if you guys have any question or if you are a Muslim please feel free leave a comment in the in the down in the video and you don't have to to agree with us just show us your skills and if you have a Muslim cleric he is willing to debate me about this topic or other topic feel free in a few weeks from now I will be back in the state and people they can call me back again live on air and we can take and receive phone calls as you see here I cannot even decide when my broadcast is going to be I have to wait until there's no noise around me so I can do the broadcast with this I want to say may the Lord bless you and don't forget to tell my to, to all your friends that if they would like to have a handy reference go and get my books from Amazon amazon.com Amazon France amazon.de Germany just type Christian Prince and you can find my books and we appreciate those who help us and support our mission in every way every mean by downloading the videos posting it around or by donation or by sharing books or by sharing knowledge or by inviting us to churches may the Lord bless you Christ is Lord Islam is false proven from the mouth of the devil thank you and God bless